Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eustace Leon Greaves, Jr. I like to call myself your insurance coach and welcome you to this episode of The Greaves Report. I own an insurance brokerage in Brooklyn, New York called Bridge Insurance Agency. Again, I am an independent insurance agent and broker, beholden to no one but the needs of my clients. Always put them first. What I wanted to do today uh, here at this great expo uh, was to just give you some factors that determine how much you'll pay for your co-op or condo coverage, also maybe your rental coverage, uh, and things you can do to lower the premium, what goes into establishing that premium, and other coverages you should really consider purchasing. Okay. Now, to begin, let's start about the factors that determine how much you're going to pay. And again, let's start with the building. And let's start with the number of floors and the number of units. That plays a major role in how much you're going to pay. Because the more units in a building, the more floors, uh, the higher the risk involved. Now, we also have to figure out whether the house, the building has fire escapes or is it fire resistive? Fire resistive means that you, you know, the, the actual uh, fire stairs, the stairs in the building are fire resistive. So they, you know, they provide a way to get out of the building safely in the event of a fire condition. If there are fire escapes, and that means you have to go outside. So those buildings are usually, uh, the, the fee is usually calculated a little bit differently. Now, the number of commercial exposures, just as it affects whether or not you can get a mortgage in that co-op or condo, can also affect um, whether or not you can get a co-op or condo policy or pay more or pay less. So if it's just an office exposure, you'll probably pay a lot less than if there's a, a full-time restaurant on the first floor of the building. Now, <clears throat> another factor is the clue report. Now, CLUE stands for the Comprehensive Loss Underwriting Exchange, which is used by all insurance companies. So if you made a claim, say, two years ago for a lost ring, and you made a police report, or you made an insurance claim, it's in your CLUE report. So the clearer your CLUE report, or the fewer claims you have, that's going to positively affect how much you pay for your insurance. But if you're making little claims here, there, and there all over the place, you're going to pay more for insurance or perhaps not even qualify for certain companies. Distance to the coastline is another important factor. Some companies will not write you or write your unit if your unit faces the water or the coast and that is less than half a mile away. However, uh, if your unit is just on the other side of the building, even though you're within two-tenths of a mile from the coast with a lot of companies, they'll still write it because in the event of wind damage, what have you, your unit is on the other side of the building. So what you want to do is you want to find out from your agent or broker just how that factors into your particular premium amount. Now, let's talk about each individual unit. Well, each individual unit has what's called a replacement cost. I like to figure the replacement cost of the unit. In other words, what it's going to cost to replace the walls, ceilings, and floors halfway in. So imagine if you could cut the ceiling, say, to the beams. And the same thing to the support beams for the floor and the support beams for the walls. What happens is that's what you're going to normally be responsible for after a covered cause of loss. So if the building has a terrific fire, and I don't mean terrific in a good way, and your unit is completely devastated, you want to make sure that the master policy for your co-op or condo has enough coverage that it in fact has replacement cost coverage so that the building will be rebuilt the way it was with any necessary upgrades based on the changes in the building codes. 
then it's going to be up to you to have enough coverage in your condo or co-op policy to do what? To uh, restore your unit to what it was. If you had recessed lighting, you're going to want recessed lighting again. If you had oak plank flooring from an old barn up in uh, Maine, you're going to want to try to get oak plank flooring again. If you had plaster lav walls, that might be a little tough, but you may want to try, if you get what's called vintage underwriting in your policy, you may want to try to get somebody in to redo the plaster lav walls. So replacement cost, I usually figure it out to be about $300 a square foot. Now, if you're looking to buy a co-op or condo, your bank is going to require no less than 20% 20, 20 of the gross unit price or the market price of that unit. So if you're getting some kind of subsidy to buy the unit, it's not going to be based on a subsidized price. It will be based on the full market price of that unit. Again, 20% is the magic number. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, so we talked about the, the replacement cost. Now let's talk about your coverage needs. How much do you need for your personal property? Your beds, your linens, your TVs, your stereos, everything, you, your clothing, everything you have in your unit. How much do you need for that? Now, question to ask you, do you have a personal inventory down to the last sweat sock? Without one, it's going to be extremely difficult to be fully indemnified or made whole for your loss because the insurance company adjuster is going to say, listen, you seem like a nice person. However, however, I've got to go back to my supervisor and justify why I'm giving you 50000 when you can only prove 20000 So make it easy for your adjuster to work with you Make sure you have a personal home inventory down to the last sweat sock. Now, how much loss of use do you need? Now, loss of use is a coverage in the policy, and we'll run through the coverages again at the end. Loss of use is the coverage that gives you money for the first, last, and security at another apartment. Because, again, if you have a mortgage, or even if, even if you don't have a mortgage, you still have monthly maintenance. I'm sure that there's still going to, a bill is still going to come to wherever you are to pay that mortgage and or monthly maintenance and or common charges, whatever they may be. Meanwhile, you have to pay rent somewhere else. Loss of use pays the rent. Okay. Now, you also want to think about the liability limits you want to take. I always suggest under the basic policy, one million dollars for personal liability, five thousand dollars for for medical. Why one million? Have you seen some of these commercials lately with the different law firms? They get me very nervous, especially the one where the phone number is one eight hundred eight million. Okay, having just having a couple of little issues here with the computer. That's no problem. Now. Another thing you want to think about are your endorsement amounts or your endorsements. Now, what are endorsements? I call them the essential, supplemental, and optional additions to a policy, sort of like sprinkles on an ice cream cone. So, I'll give you an example of one endorsement that's my favorite endorsement, and I'll give you a funny story about it. It's loss assessment coverage. Did you know that if the building suffers a loss, that is normally covered and there's not enough insurance that you can be assessed based on the number of shares you own in the cooperative or the actual value of your condo unit you can be assessed an amount of money to make up the difference between what the co-op what the what the condo or co-op has an in insurance and what they need to finish the work Again, you want to know what's in that condo or co-op master policy. Now, I was doing, a few years ago, I was, I was asked to come to a co-op in downtown Brooklyn on Ashland Place to talk to people about buying co-op insurance. The cooperative 
Several buildings clustered there on Ashland Place. They had finally decided to make it a requirement that everyone must have co-op insurance. One of the big reasons, just in case your pipe breaks and it leaks down into your neighbor down below, your insurance will answer to it and not the building's coverage. So I went there and of course I found out I was in a competitive situation with three other insurance people. Okay, no problem. Excuse me. So of course we were all asked to speak about some aspect of the co-op condo policy. And of course people talked about replacement costs. They talked about having a personal home inventory. They talked about this and that. When it got to me, I said, okay, let's talk about loss assessment. And the heads of the other three insurance agents snapped and said, what the heck is that? And when I explained that loss assessment can help cover the difference between the, the, the difference that the condo or co-op is asking you to pay after a covered cause of loss, as long as that loss was not caused by, by the condo or co-op being sued by some unit of the government for some flagrant violation, you needed that coverage. And also, let's say you get sued. Well, let's say, it's, no, let's say that something happens in a common area and you get sued as a part of that condo or co-op association and there's not enough liability insurance. Loss assessment steps in to do what? Cover the difference. What do I suggest nowadays? 25000 or 50000 minimum. 25000 or 50000 minimum. All righty. So the funny thing was, one of the agents there said, I got to write this down. So that made me realize something. Folks, I need you, I, and, and this is why I need you to go home, or I guess you're already home because it's a virtual expo. You need to go, you need to, go to the app, take a look at your policy, and see if you have loss assessment coverage. If not, it might be a good idea to talk to your insurance professional and have it added to your policy today. It's not expensive, but not having it can be extremely expensive. So that's loss assessment. Now, water and sewer backup. I know you're living on the sixth floor of a condo or a co-op, but do you have a dedicated storage unit in the basement? And if there is a sewer backup or the sump pump in the basement fails, do you, do you have any coverage for the things you're going to lose in the basement? So what you want to do is figure out what's in that storage unit and buy water, sewer, or sump breakdown coverage. Now, scheduled items. You may have a lot of extremely expensive jewelry, furs, gun collection, whatever. Please be advised that your standard co-op or condo policy does, has, just gives you limited coverage when it comes to your furs, your jewelry, things of that nature, you, you know, your china, your fine silverware. So what you want to do is have these things appraised. And then whatever they're appraised for, purchase scheduled coverage for those items. This way, in the event of a covered cause of loss, those items, what? What happens? Oh, you've lost the items, but now you're going to get dollar for dollar whatever the appraised value was so that you can go out and seek those items again. So something to do, get scheduled coverage. Uh, now, there's something you, there are several things you can do yourself to lower your co-op, condo, even rental insurance coverage premium. Number one, your insurance credit score. What do we mean by that? Yes, you have an insurance credit score and it's based a lot on, a lot of it is based on your FICO score. Big difference though, like a Medicaid look back, it's five years. It averages about five years look back with most insurance companies. So what you don't want to have over the past five years, if you're looking to get new coverage, judgments, liens, foreclosures, bankruptcies, or repossessions. Those are five of the big no-nos. And of course, you want to make your payments on time. And you want to try to keep your credit utilization under 20% to get a better insurance credit score. Remember, the higher your insurance credit score, the lower your premium. The lower your insurance credit score, 
the higher your premium. Now, you also want to avoid, of course, the late payments and too many hard pulls. So if you're thinking about refinancing your mortgage, what have you, I would suggest going to one of the agencies like NHS of NYC, uh, Harlem Churches for Community Involvement, HCCI based up in Harlem, folks like that, and, and talk to a counselor and let them do a soft pull of your credit and they can take a look at it and say, well, listen, you need to do this, this, this in order to really qualify for a great rate on a refi or for that first purchase of your condo unit. Now, what are some of the other ways to lower your premium? Well, maintain a high insurance credit score, as I just said. You want to qualify. system can and make sure their central station monitored that's another 10 15 percent discount uh, if you have a security guard at the front door in the lobby that's a discount uh, if you have fire extinguishers smoke and carbon detect monoxide detectors uh, deadbolt locks not double cylinder locks single deadbolt locks some companies will give you a five percent discount for that and of course you can always buy a higher deductible why the higher the deductible the lower the premium so just try to calculate what you can handle in the event of a loss uh, or what portion of a covered cause of loss you can handle if you know you can easily handle a thousand take one thousand you will res that will result in a drop in your annual premium here's a question i get all the time why do i need flood insurance for my condo or co-op or should i buy flood insurance for my condo or co-op my answer is always if you're buying a condo uh if you're buying a condo well, and it's in a special flood hazard area, and they usually are designated with a mix of A or V. You don't have a choice. If you're getting a mortgage or if you're doing a refi or whatever, your bank should have, if, or if you already have a mortgage from a federally chartered bank and you're in one of those special flood hazard areas, you should have gotten a letter from the bank saying, we need evidence of flood insurance within 45 days or we'll go buy our own on your behalf. Now, why not a co-op? Remember, you don't own the co-op. You own shares in a corporation, a cooperative association, rather. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the building has flood insurance. Now, you can get contents insurance through the, flood, through the different flood insurance vendors. But in terms of insuring the wall, ceilings, and floors, only a condo owner can do that. I recently had a mortgage person from one of New York City's largest banks called me up and say, Eustace, I need you to get this guy caught. The guy's buying a co-op and I need to, in order to close, I, I need him to have co I need him to have flood insurance on the co-op. He can't buy flood insurance on the co-op. He can buy it on his belongings, but not the co-op. No, we need it. If we don't get it, we can't close. I said, you can't force him to buy insurance on his co-op. He doesn't own it own shares so after I so I had to dig out the manual fax over the pages that dealt with that and he had to bring it to his lending committee and they finally said okay no co-op insurance but now another banker called me doing a condo loan I'd say about a half mile away same special flood hazard area there I was able to write a flood insurance policy for the condo unit because they own the wall ceilings and floors so why should you own it even if you're on the 6th or the 20th floor? Well, you know what happened after Hurricane Sandy? A lot of buildings had their structural integrity compromised and those buildings collapsed or had to be destroyed. If that happens, guess what? Whether you are, have a co-op with flood insurance, whether you have a co-op or a condo, if you don't have flood insurance either for your contents 
or contents in building, respectively, guess what? You have no coverage. Your condo and co-op policy does not cover you for flood. Remember that. Now, what are some coverages in the condo, or what are the, the, the major coverages in the condo or co-op policies? Well, coverage A is dwelling. That's when I talked about replacement costs. Remember, $300 a square foot? So dwelling deals with what we need in actual cash dollars to replace or repair, restore that unit. Recessed bookcase for recessed bookcase, oak plank flooring for oak plank flooring. You get the idea. You don't want to have 10000 too little, but it's never a bad thing to have 1000 too much. Okay? Now, personal property. Again, the bedding, the clothing, the TVs. I'm looking around my, you know, everything you own within those walls. Make sure you have a personal home inventory down to the last sweat sock. And if you're not sure how to get started on one, if you go to my resource area, I've placed a personal home inventory brochure in there for you. Next, we have loss of use. Remember, this pays the rent when you have to find someplace else to live while they're repairing the building, and with that, your unit. Coverage E is personal liability. Again, that's that $1 million I was talking about. You can also get what's called a personal umbrella liability, which will give you additional amounts of liability in increments of $1 million. Here's the great thing. Not only will it cover you for your condo, co-op, or even your rental exposure, but it will also cover you for your activities while you drive in your car. If you're on a jet ski, if you're on a ski do, if whatever you just about just about whatever you're doing, as long as it's a legal conveyance, you're going to have your your that liability coverage will extend. So you're going to have additional liability coverage to protect you against lawsuits while you on items. Now, medical payments to others. I may come to drop off a piece of paper for you, slip on your fall, but I don't want to sue you. But I still have to go to the hospital and pay co-payments, deductibles, and co-insurance. Make sure you have $5,000 in medical payments to others. This is New York City, for example. This is the New York City region. Trust me, $1,000 will not do it. Send them with five. Now, last question. Let's say you own a unit that you're renting out. Or you're a renter. Nothing wrong with that. Should you ask the renter who's renting your unit, or should you, the renter, own a rental insurance policy? Yes, 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 yes. First, for the renter, understand one thing. Your landlord's insurance coverage ends at the door. If everything burns up in the unit, the landlord will have, a, their unit will be restored. And meanwhile, you're completely out of luck because everything you've owned has turned into crispy critters. With renter's insurance, having a personal inventory down to the last sweat sock, you'll know how much coverage you need so that you can recover and also find someplace else to rent. The, the unit owner, this is the key point. You're the unit owner. And you've got a great tenant in that unit. Problem is, sometimes he has parties that are a little raucous. The last thing you want is for someone to get a little bit loaded, or as I like to say, polluted, inebriated, drunk, and they go out and get into a car accident, or they go out and they fall down the stairs, whatever it is. And then what are they going to do? Yeah, they may sue the person that they were partying with in that unit, but they're also probably going to sue you. There's an old law called the Dram Shop Law. I won't go into it now, but basically, you own the place, so you're going to be sued. So what you do is this. You can more or less mm, gently insist, based on your relationship, that the renter in your unit purchase renter, renter's insurance with at least a million dollars of liability insurance in the policy, you really don't care what they get in terms of personal property or loss of use. But with a million dollars and they name you through endorsement, 
as an additional insured for the purposes of liability only. So if someone goes out and hurts themselves and there's a lawsuit and there's a judgment for $900,000, that will come out of the rental insurance policy. Uh, one of the things I like to say about what I like to do uh, since I've been in this business since 1982, I want everybody to live life fully covered while building walls of protection around their wealth. This is another way to build a wall of protection around your wealth by making sure those who rent from you have insurance. My name is Eustace Leon Greaves Jr., the insurance coach. This is the Greaves Report. You can go to the resource area. Um, somewhere in this booth and you will find uh, the personal home inventory brochure you'll find some brochures on condo co-op and renters insurance and some other perhaps useful items that you can use I look forward to hearing from you I, I hope I meet each and every one of you one day in a in a let's just say a positive light and in a great place. and uh, just be well, take care, and may the creator of your choosing always, always, always uh, pour out their richest blessings to you and those you love. And even those you don't like too much because they probably need it more than anybody else. You can reach me at 718-783-2722. That's 718-783-2722. Or go to my website. Uh, which is www.greavesinsurance.com. That's G-R-E-A-V-E-S, insurance.com. Look forward to hearing from you, and please enjoy the rest of the expo. It looks like it's going to be a winner. I may even try to sneak out and hit a couple of booths myself. Again, be well. God bless. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.